Welcome, friends, to Megacorps Incorporated. That's going to be for a, from a preview version of the Megacorp DLC. Thank you, Paradox, for giving me this great chance to present you the features of this magnificent expansion to Stellaris. I'm not like, I cannot hold back. Yeah, you know, I'm a big fan of Stellaris, so there's not many things I don't like about this game. So there's many things I love about this game and we're going to explore them. But first and foremost, we're going to role play and we're going to explain the setup of this game right now. This is a huge game, a thousand stars. We're going to have 30 AIs, 10 of them are from the finalists of my grand AI tournament. So they are very, very dangerous. And adding to that, we are starting on the Grand Admiral difficulty. That's the highest difficulty possible. We have the Crisis on with normal starting times and uh, we have five times the Crisis strength. So that's going to be exciting when it hits. <laughs> so um, it's an unforgiving galaxy and uh, we're going to do our best to survive here. So we need the best of the best. And that brings us to the setup. Di Director Dr. Frank and Steiner of Megacorps Incorporated is reviving people from the past, from about 180 years ago, when a thermonuclear war destroyed the surface of the Earth. The global elites were brought into vaults beneath the Atlantic Ocean, and they went into cryogenic sleep until now, when they were slightly modified revived by the director Dr. Frank and Steiner and the medical AIs. But now we also have survivors on Mega Earth, our empire capital. So let's have a look at our species that we have. So we have first the human elite that's going to be revived. And uh, these people are going to be and you can ask me to revive one of your favorites like you could say please revive Elon Musk we need him and uh, then the first time we need a new scientist or a new governor Elon Musk will be revived so um, we have a lot of people there coming and they are venerable why are they venerable they have been genetically modified through their treatment of cryogenic sleep so they live a lot longer now, <clears throat> but that has also side effects. They're slow breeders now. And because they have uh, been members of an elite and they feel still entitled to that, they probably came to, into that position also by being talented. So they have a higher leader level cap, but they are also decadent now. Their worker and slave happiness goes down a little bit. This species believes that what, whenever there is hard work that needs doing, that work is always best done by somebody else. We come to somebody else. The regular humans that didn't go into the vaults for financial reasons, for not belonging to the global elites. Who knows? There have been very few survivors. That is represented by only 12 pops of the humans compared to 12 pops of the human elites. So they are serviles because they have been generate, degenerated a little bit by that long life on an irradiated earth in primitive conditions. They believe the human elites are gods from a golden age come to revive that age. And so they don't want to be leaders. They want to follow the human elites and uh, their orders. They are also, due to their surviving the bad conditions, they are fleeting their lifespan is a little bit down they are also slow learners that wasn't a focus uh, a focus was survival and as you can see here rapid breeding led to su their survival and a certain nomadic lifestyle earth itself has recovered a bit so is a normal continental world now what you can see here is the new districts and the workplaces and the potential other buildings we have for these districts. At the moment, 
we have everything filled, everything is okay. We will get a message here if we have people free for work and then we'll decide what to go for. At the moment we have a relatively balanced production and we'll need that. So that comes to the new resources. We have good old energy credits, minerals and food used for what <laughs> whatever you think it is used for. Food is used to grow pops, minerals, to build things, but not all things anymore. Energy credits is used for uh, mainly upkeep. And uh, so we're going to start a few things right off the bat now. We're going to use our minerals and our alloys, because as you can see here, <coughs> our agenda is fleet expansion. We're also fanatic materialists and we are authoritarians. We believe in these elites. <coughs> we have ruthless competition. Our leader level cap is even increased. So the leaders are very competitive among themselves. We have indentured assets. That's going to be for the regular humans. Uh, they are going to be... Well, it has little to do with the barbaric practice of slavery. These workers, workers are merely paying off their debts to society, so the corporation, uh, indefinitely, because they are, I mean, we are saving their life now, right? So, what can you do? Director Dr. Frankensteiner has also, is also an industrialist. We get more minerals, 10% more minerals, and a space miner, giving us better mining station output, and mining station build cost goes down a little bit. So, let's send the construction ship and build a mining station on 4 Westar, the asteroid here. Also, we will build the shipyard, another science ship. We'll hire a new scientist for that. That one I'm going to probably name myself still, but the new scientists, you can all name or better, <clears throat> call Dr. Frankensteiner to revive these scientists or governors or whomever you'd like to have revived. But we will all only revive them when we need them because we're a corporation. We won't go for like useless people. It all costs energy, you know. So let's see what we will research. Lene Westergaard Howe is actually a real-life quantum uh, physics scientist and so she's just starting out and also researching her quantum theory here as well. She's a genius too. Then we have Christiane Nüsslein Vollhard, a German um, genetic geneticist and she's probably going to continue that line too with genome mapping. Mapping the genome of an individual through the sequencing of their DNA opens up for tailored medical treatments and therapies. CRISPR. The pop growth speed goes up by 10%. She's going to research that. As you can see, the cost has been increased massively and all the system has been like shaken up massively too. There's always this, this red thing here saying no progress, but that will change once the game runs. Then we have Mildred Dresselhaus. Uh, a carbon scientist and uh, also with something into engineering and she'll go for something civil also and in that case we'll go for nanomechanics more engineering research from well researchers so these are the basic things we need to do ah let's send out our science ship who is there carolyn shoemaker a scientist who um is now here at age 39 wrongly she's meticulous and she is the discoverer of i think a comet or something and also is a very influential astronomer still today and she's going she's in her 80s i think i hope she's still she's still alive but she's alive with us so we'll send her here and she can explore space now and then <laughs> let's have a little bit of a look at these other things have we, we have here consumer goods consumer goods are mainly made by minerals 
as you can see here in the mining district we produce that and we have research labs we have alloy foundries and we have civilian industries that's where the consumer goods come from from artisans that turn minerals into consumer goods then we have alloy foundries that turn minerals into alloys alloys are used for ships mainly and star bases too then we have the research labs researchers turn consumer goods into research points for new technologies so we need first minerals these for research we need first minerals these minerals then go into the civilian industries and the civilian industries deliver consumer goods which are going to be turned into research points by the researchers so basically you give the researchers their goods so they can survive and research for you and then they give you research points then we have the planetary administrations where you have executive jobs you have a little bit of housing and amenities enforcer jobs too to control the people and exec executive jobs so You can see the details here there are going to be more details coming then we have a trade value it represents the civilian day-to-day -day economic activity star bases collect trade value and convert it into resources such as energy credits if connected to your capital planet through a trade route yeah there's going to be a lot we'll have to decide now because as you can see usually it was the case that like you started off with a couple of policies and they were like your baseline you wouldn't change them at the start but with megacorp that is different you should instantly look at your policies what you want to do of course first contact protocol is very important resettlement is also important all of these things are kind of important but we have something like food policy as you can see here we have a very high monthly gain so we're going to have big storage now what we want to to have at the start is a little bit higher population growth so we don't want to go for strict rationing because that's going to decrease our growth speed and biological pop happiness we want to go for nutritional plentitude that's going to have higher pop food upkeep but it's going to have higher growth speed as well and also higher happiness then we we'll go for an economic policy. Let's see. We have a militarized economy that would decrease our monthly consumer goods by 25%. Our monthly alloys go up by 15% in turn. Then we have a mixed economy that would be neither direction. Or we could go for a civilian economy that would focus on research and stuff. I mean, at the start, we will need a lot of alloys. So for the, for the start, we're going to stay with that. Ideally, we'll go for a mixed economy because then we're not losing anything Because we really need consumer goods as well, right? We have a trade policy. We can adapt We can go for tr wealth creation each collective trade value earns us one energy then we can go consumer benefits each collective trade value earns us 0 0.5 uh, energy and 0 0.25 consumer goods that is we could do it if we need consumer goods we could go for consumer benefits then we have a marketplace of ideas that would deliver us some energy and some unity and unity that goes into the usual tree we'll look at that but we won't change that for now because i really think base resources are best at the start and so there's that robotic workers they are allowed we won't uh, outlaw them I mean, we are fanatic materialists. We cannot even uh, outlaw them. Refugees, we want to have the citizen species only. I'm not sure about that. I think refugees welcome would be something we would have here because we're a corporation. We are not like going to go for, ah, oh, these immigrants are bad. We're rather going for, hey, we can expand our workforce here. <laughs> So, the refugees are actually welcome.
So, but as we don't know other empires now, we'll just leave it at that for now. Population controls are allowed, so we can if we want. We can also choose a favorite species to procreate on our main planet. I'll show you that, but it, it has some negatives, but you can control who grows on the planets. If that is allowed, then the slavery is allowed. Well, it's not slavery, you know, it's just a little bit, they're not that well paid. <laughs> then our perch is going to be displacement only. There might be a, uh, some kind of day where we have to displace some people. We're not going to change that at the start. Maybe later we'll go and make that prohibited. But for now, we'll just leave it at that. War philosophy is unrestricted wars for now. Maybe later we'll change it to liberation wars or defensive wars, because as a corporation you don't want to expand too much. You can want to expand at the start very quickly, and then the administrative cap is very unforgiving for now. Orbital bombardment, we'll leave it at that. We're amoral. Selective might be pleasing some people, but we are not about pleasing some people. We are about making profits. We are about selling our cryogenic business and other things from the great times of the Golden Age to other space species that we meet. Resettlement is allowed. First contact protocol. Yeah, it's peaceful. We've had that already. So, let's have a look at traditions. There will be some hard choices to make. I mean, Harmony? I don't know if a corporation is going to go for Harmony. Diplomacy is another thing. We have Oakman Markets there, insider trading. Secure shipping, that might be something, but we haven't met anyone. An expansion? That's unlikely to be for a corporation. Same goes for domination and supremacy. That's not really a corporation. Like, prosperity is something else. That might be good, but maybe later on. At the start, we want to discover, we want to explore space. We also have uh, the fanatic materialist ethics. And so it's probably about the curiosity as well. And the people we have revived are certainly testament to that. I mean, look at our leaders. They are mostly scientists interested in space. And that's what we're going to go for first. So, we want to explore space and maybe want to build a colony ship. Now, a colony ship is now extremely expensive, as you can see. It needs food now, 200 food. It needs 200 consumer goods and it needs 200 alloys. So, for now, we're going to... Uh, <laughs> wait a bit until we have that in explore space and once our science ship has reached over here we're going to go for edicts as you can see here we have a lot of new edicts and edicts are now basically paying some stuff also some exotic resources like gases like these things i don't know what that is Strange particles, crystals, all like normal influence. So we're probably going to go for map the stars once we have reached that system. We have crystalline sensors. Crazy. That said, <laughs> I think we can go now. Or have I forgotten something? No, I, I never forget anything, of course. So, um, I, wanted to, I wanted to look at growth as well for you. So you can see there's a human elite growing here and next might be one of the human workers are the normal humans coming, but we don't know that exactly. We don't know whom. We can also look at the species because I want to show you whom we have there. Looking at this is going to show you who will probably go for 
which jobs and the normal humans that are not going to be leaders are probably going to go and produce the basic resources like energy credits, minerals, food. So they are the backbone of our society. They are also more likely to be in these uh, it's not slavery jobs. Then we have the human elites that are probably going to go for the artisan jobs. Consumer goods, alloys and research is are the main jobs they will go for. They are also going to be our leaders and they have also, well, uh, relatively great traits. And as you can see here, they have, because of the civics we have, and uh, they are being talented, they have a maximum skill level of seven right off the, right off the bat. That's going to help a lot. So, What's left to do is actually start the game and see what it brings to us. So we'll watch our science ship go forward and explore that system quickly. At the start, I'm going to go for normal speed because a lot will happen there. At least I'm expecting a lot. And so uh, there's still a lot to talk about. And there's still a lot to discover also for me. I mean, I've had the preview version for a day now but I can only play in the evenings so it's not going to be full day level of expertise even though I'm really deep deeply diving into the mechanics complete. hey look at that already built a star base thing and what do we have now I think our science ship is what we have here the clock Let's see who we can recruit there. We have 122 energy credits. We could go for someone who is a Roma. It's 41 years old, but we'll live to 160. So we could wait for Valentina Volkova. We can also hire Claudia Faso instantly. She has a lower upkeep as well. She's eager, but I think we're going for quality. So we're going to wait until we have the 200 energy credits to go for Valentina Vojkova. Um, but she'll get a special name. The one we revive will be probably different. Because is there a scientist named Valentina Vojkova? I don't know. I think we'll go for Ludmila Chernik. That's also, that's a Russian astronomer, uh, astronomer I think. So there's that. Let's follow our science ship here. And we can also already send our science ship into the other direction. Um, actually, we cannot without a leader, it seems. <laughs> Maybe if we are passive, no. So we need a leader to steer that ship. That has changed as well, it seems. two days we're going to be there and we're going to start our survey now are we there we are there and there's a planet we've discovered Alpha Centauri so let's not forget what we wanted to do we have an edict here we want to map the stars we want to have great anomaly discovery chances and a higher survey speed it's expensive I'll give you that but fanatic materialists we have great scientists and we're going to use them so let's not forget it. 200 energy credits we have Ludmila Chernik to hire and that's also something I mean we can already try to get the resources for the colony ship because expanding would really be good wouldn't it ah it would be so good we feel the need for expansion. And look, that's our governor. It's John McCain. He was so eager to get resurrected after they um, removed with the advanced AI techniques his brain tumor. Complete. He's eager to be there for the world again. And restore order in space. 
What are we going to go for next? Let's see. We could go for the basic resources instantly. Here on Uranus. Yeah, in go the Dukes. That would be good. Then we could go for a research station. I mean, we have reduced costs for the mining station. So we're going to use that instantly. There we go. And there goes our mineral income very quickly already. Yeah, this is a symbol that we can support the construction of additional buildings. As you can see, this is going to be, if you if you know Europa Universalis, this system with the buildings is actually similar to that. You unlock slots and then you can build more. Uh, and you can see we have a lot of, we could have potentially a lot of pops on this planet, but we'll need districts for that. That's going to be something we're going to dive into later. Step by step. Let's hope step by step doesn't bite us because <laughs> Grand Admiral. And also, that's something that I know that, of course, the people here don't know. Ravenous swarms and something have been frequent in this galaxy due to, well, the finalists of the Grand AI tournament we had. <laughs> Oh, 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 there we go. Yeah, already botched that, right? So, let's recruit. Ludmilla Chernik, I think she's written that way. Please correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Going to send her out instantly on that path. What would we like to have more? Probably consumer goods and alloys. Alloys are going to be really, really important later on. We'll need a star base in Alpha Centauri once that is surveyed, but that's going to be a while, as you can see here to fully survey that system first. I mean, Carolyn is at it, but yeah. <laughs> so we're going to be very quick with Ludmilla Chernik. She's a Roma and we also have mapped the stars. It gives us another 25%, so we have really high survey speed. Mining station in your anus. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> no one can escape that joke. Look, we also have higher trade value now. That gives us a lot more energy credits. That's why I was so surprised at the energy credits so quickly. So let's travel over there to Neptune and build a research station. Because, well, we have it. So let's do it. Alpha Centauri has some energy credits. gas giant here. Also feel free to suggest names for these little planets, for the big planets. I mean, I think we're going to keep Alpha Centauri for the Alpha Centauri Prime world here. Like these are like hallmark systems, maybe also Sirius or Barnard Star, very well known. For other systems we can really uh, also name them something like, I don't know, New York, New Mexico, New Germany, or something like that. That's going to be fun, because Mega Earth, yes. New India. I don't know, where are you coming from? New Poland, maybe. Just feel free to tell me your wishes. We can rename a lot of things, and it all makes sense in the story, right? Who do you want to be revived? Next. You can already, yeah, you can already comment on this. 
and I'll bring it into the list. And then, once we need someone, we'll bring him there from the cryogenic vaults. That's also why this guy is so blue. Yeah, that's that's the embalming fluid. It's like formaldehyde or something like that. I found something. <gasps> we found something. Look at that. The discovery of alien life. The Mega Grissom has made a startling find on Alpha Centauri 3. The planet is teeming with alien life. Let's have a look at that. There it is, Alpha Centauri 3. A wet climate and teeming with life. Potential a lot of districts, generator districts, mining districts, agriculture districts. Very nice. Four blockers. It has a lot of dense jungle and kelp. For the first time in history, we have encountered life forms that did not originate on Mega Earth. This amazing discovery has silenced those who believe we were alone in the universe. Although none of the alien creatures found on Alpha Centauri 3 are sapient, it is likely only a matter of time before we encounter beings that are. We may not be alone out there. And Christian Nusslein Fallhard is happy about this influx of society or maybe genetic research gained from these creatures, these alien creatures we've discovered on Alpha Centauri 3. Probably new rain worms that will improve the atmosphere of, of Mega Earth that is so damaged still that repair the soil or something like that. Look, that's very fun here. We have three suns and like all of these have planets surrounding them, worlds, gas giants. Really like that new system. Contact report. Simple forms of life. The Megacorps Incorporated is a buzz with news of the alien organisms discovered by the Mega Grissom some time ago. But far from intelligent, there's life out there that we can exploit and make profit from. We're going forward in this. Construction ship is ready. Look at how the we built is. something. We built something. A research station. So we're going to have good engineering in the future. Cause that. So Neptune. Let's go over to Jupiter and build a station there as well. Because we have enough minerals. Certainly. We're saving up a bit. Look, we are missing some alloys for a colony ship. We have the consumer goods and the food. The alloys is what we need still. And then we'll instantly build a colony ship, of course. Well, not totally instantly, I think. I'm not sure. We have to calculate it a bit. We'll see about that. Here, we have an anomaly on Alpha Centauri B. Relative difficulty is routine. That should be doable. Sensors pick up rhythmic movement on the hellish surface. Alpha Centauri B1. Where is that? Look at that. It's a molten world. That's going to be very interesting for Carolyn Shoemaker. So let's research that. She's meticulous. so She's unlikely to miss anomalies. What will Carolyn find out? I mean, probably we should have ignored that and so on and going for a quicker survey thing, but we're role-playing this too and Carolyn is unlikely to let that pass. I mean, she's meticulous. She won't go to the next thing and leave that. I mean, we left, we left the challenging one because that was too long, but a routine one all the way all the time let's have a look how the population's growing yeah it's a good growth even if we're slow breeders we have a normal growth of three per month I think we can make it a little faster maybe have a look at this system. Prospect analyzed. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> oh, look, that, that's an interesting system because we have ice asteroids here. Ooh. Frozen water. Maybe we can use that later. Frozen water. That's something we would really like to have now. Out there in Germany because it's so dry, it's crazy. That's the climate change already. I've never had it as dry as this in my lifetime. Uh, actually, let's survey until this and Shoemaker will go for the other, for the other way around. Maybe, maybe... Uh, maybe let's go for a more expansive path with her, like this, because she's so quick at doing this. We can maybe go into these directions. Ludmilla Chernik. Let's not miss the alloys and the colony ship that's going to be there quickly for us. At uh, 200 alloys we can build that and we should. Oh look there's another world here possible. Kelsim. An arid world. Probably not so good for us at the start. But later on very good. Very good. Construction complete. Nice. Our construction is complete here. And there's, I think, nothing more we can do in the solar system. So let's venture to Office Centauri. So shipyard. The colony ship of the human elite. Only the human elite can colonize. That's something we want to look at the rights. Now, the rights. We have full citizenship here, but these guys cannot generate leaders, so we don't have to go for that in rights because they don't want to be leaders. So we don't have to change the rights to something like residents. So they will not be unhappy about that. And uh, yeah, they have political influence, but they can choose their, from their human elite leaders. So this is kind of democratic. They won't belong to the leaders, but at least they can choose them. Geothermal. Let's have a look here. The measured pounding observed from orbit is the motion of immense and ancient geothermal extractors breathing their last, built and then abandoned at some point in the distant past. The vast batteries of disintegrating machinery have been pumping up superheated fluids from the planet's core ever since. Their storage capacitors are all broken or leaking, but some energy can still be siphoned from them. Wow! Nearly 900 energy credits. Is that crazy or what? Shoemaker, you're a genius. Now, genius, speed up a little bit. We need to survey. Yeah, we're not going to um, go for... Another anomaly at this point going to go for an outpost as quickly as we can. Contact report. Remnants. That was from these strange generators on the molten planet of Alpha Centauri B1. Intelligent life taunts with pointed absence. Reads a popular news net post on Mega Earth. The people of the Mega Corps Incorporated are apparently finding some humor in the fact that lower forms of alien life are now a matter of public record, but potential equals from other stars continue to elude us. Science officer Carolyn Shoemaker's report on the traces found of Alpha Centauri B1 seemingly only add an ironic twist to the situation. Remarkable. 
That will change though. We know there's something waiting out there in the cold emptiness of space that is not so empty anymore. And it will buy, what will it buy from us? An eternal sleep? Or maybe some space cola? We'll see. Can we build something here? Not yet. We need to fully survey. Also, we need some alloys first. Anomaly detected. Ah, look at that. We have found a new anomaly and we've gained a level. We have, oh, we've gained expertise propulsion. Leader is following years of study considered an expert within the field of propulsion. It's a challenging one, but politically she is going to be uh, challenged to leave this for now, even though it's very interesting for her. Sensor echoes have indicated the presence of some kind of unidentified object deep within the atmosphere of this gas giant. Leave that be for now. Continue. Look, there's a trade value at least. Through hard work and experience, Carolyn Shoemaker has developed new skills, expertise propulsion. She's level two now. Very nice. These anomalies and everything. Really good. It's about our population here. What is it what we need most? That's something we have to think about. Probably we need alloys first when we want to expand. Then we need more consumer goods. We have enough minerals for now. We're producing a lot of them, so. And we can also get them from the mining stations, so there's that. Look at that, we have tons of energy credits, so we're not going to buy, you go, going to go for uh, mining stations so quickly, probably. Look at that. Kelsim has alloys. And minerals. But an arid world. Not so good. So our traditions, we have discussed that already. We're going to go for discovery. Our anomaly research speed is increased by 20%. We want to discover space first. We want to discover what is out there and what is profitable. We don't want to miss anything. We want to profit from any trace of life. And Ludmilla has also leveled up. The quick surveyor. Construction complete. The abundance is coming over. Sent her to the orbit already. She's going to be ready very soon. There's one more order. And it's actually very quick now to build an outpost. Wait, 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 what what are you doing? Anomaly found. Hey. Ah, everything this. happening at once. Hey, stop this. Stop this. Enter this orbit again. What's going to be there? The Erasian Concordat. We've recovered artifacts from an ancient alien civilization on Proxima Centauri 1. From what we have translated so far of their language, we have learned that these aliens called themselves the Erasian Concordat. They were an interstellar power that held sway over this region of the galaxy a little over a million years ago. They appear to have been six-limbed mammalians, and there are several references to some sort of plague called the Javorian Pox, which swept across their empire with devastating results, possibly leading to their extinction. Line updated. Proxima Centauri. Well, we need to leave it at that. You can research quickly, but once you have surveyed the system fully, leave be for now, Carolyn. And then, only then, we'll research. Look, what, what is it we're going to need now? Consumer goods would be nice, alloys would be nice. Let's have a look at the 
and our workers here. We have three clerks, four miners, four farmers, four technicians, and we have here two artisans, two metallurgists. And I think the metallurgists are working at the alloy station. As you can see here, we have two metallurgist jobs. They turn minerals into alloys. Now, if we're going to build more alloy foundries, then we're going to have two more jobs here. We could build civilian industries, have more consumer goods, we could build commercial zones producing trade value and amenities we could go for a corporate culture site that would also give us two more manager jobs we could go for holo theaters for entertainer jobs luxury residences for more housing and amenities probably for the for the global elites precinct houses probably for our normal citizens producing unity decreasing crime and spawning defense armies. And we have the research labs that we could go for, resource silos, and strongholds. So I mean, more housing also has something, right? We have a little bit of upkeep but we're going to have a lot more growth and growth is something we would really like now. If we get more pops, we have 24 now, we're going to unlock a new building slot. Luxury residences would be something, intricately designed residential towers with luxurious apartments. Advanced zero G technology is the only thing keeping the more outlandish terrace designs from collapsing pop housing needs mm, yeah we have available housing still nine so there's no need to go for the luxury residences right now I think we should concentrate on the alloy foundries first. Two more metallurgist jobs. We're going to get one more of the human elites that is going to work in the alloy foundries, I think. Let's go for one of the alloy foundries. Planetary exploitation forecast complete. Nice. So, we have the Grissom of Carolyn Shoemaker here. And she'll now be ready to research that unidentified object here. On Proxima Centauri, was that right now? Yes, I think. So here we have our construction ship. We can build Starbase. A little bit of inference and some alloys. And that's going to be relatively quick, as you can see here. Maybe it's the perfect timing for the colony ship. Who knows? Who knows? A glint of metal. Maybe we can discover something there. Look, we're so quick now. That's really cool. Resource scan complete. Calcium is fully surveyed too. Uh, yeah, we wanted to go to the calcium system. I mean, it's a preview version. It doesn't have to work perfectly. It works very nice now, so I expect good things to happen. I've also started some tests with massive Ooh, empires, so we built something. All has been very stable. Hey, John McCain, the eager one, has leveled up. He's governing better now. even better. He's gaining experience in space. The Mega India complete the construction of a starbase already. 
So what would we need first? Look, we have tons of energy credits, so we probably won't need energy credits first. Even though we have reduced cost for that. Ah. Ah. <laughs> the colony ship is coming. <gasps> Look at that. The planet has anomalies, and because of that, we cannot settle there. Ooh. That's not good. Let's build a research station here first. I mean, we're soon ready with this. So, alien murals. While conducting surface scans of Proxima Centauri 1, science officer Carolyn Shoemaker and the crew of the Mega Grissom discovered what appears to be an artificially carved slab of rock covered in alien writing. They have not detected any other signs of alien activity on the planet, and exactly how this mural came to be here is a mystery. We have prepared a special project to translate the text. <sighs> Fascinating. Log updated. And now, where's that special project we have? Yep, situation log. Has one science ship in orbit, yes. Uh, but we have something else to do right now. Going to have to send her over. To this. A glint of metal. Backscattering spectrometry sensors indicate the presence of valuable substances in the planet's crust. We need to go here quickly. And this. Kelsim. So Kelsim is ready. I'll send you over to translate the alien mural. Maybe they can be a working pair. That's also something I've been thinking about. I mean, uh, Caroline Schumacher is very apt at discovering anomalies and she's very quick at going for survey. Hmm. Let's fly over and do whatever we can do. Look, Mega Earth has an unemployed pop, but we'll change that with our alloy foundries. We have more metallurgist jobs then. One human is unemployed. Now that was to be expected. They just don't fit in that well, and their leaders, yeah. Yeah. They don't give them that much support as their own, apparently. Construction ship is doing well. Boom! We built something. Nice. We built something. Let's also build that mining station. You never know. How much can we store? Enough. Three is very nice too. So would you freeze yourself too? In cryogenic sleep? Moments before you die? I mean, there have been people returning from events like uh, covered, being covered by snow in the winter for a very long time. They've been coming back. Apparently you can freeze a lot of people um, or a lot of animals Boom. too and make them we come back. Something. We built something. Look now. The unemployment should theoretically go away. Construction complete. So one of these workers should become a specialist that produces alloys, as you can see here. What else now? Oh, let's fly over here. Okay. 
India. Let's go over here. The abundance, come on. The abundance want, wants to land. Now that's also a very slow migration from unemployment to, to something. There's a human unemployed. And what we need to have here is a human elite worker moving to become a specialist and then the worker will be employed. Look, mineralistic. Science officer Caroline Shoemaker has provided us with a detailed report on Alpha Centauri 3's geological riches. Apparently the planet's unique technonic history has served to concentrate many in minerals of interest. The mega grissom near the surface. Fantastic. Additional minerals. I've received here. Very nice. Raw minerals. This planet is home to an abundance of easily accessible minerals and ores. <sighs> Going to help a lot. Let's colonize the planet. We have that ship here now. And do we have another anomaly now here? Not yet, I think. We're translating the animal, uh, alien mural, but there's an atmospheric object. Yeah, we can send Carolyn in. But, I mean, we really don't want to. We want to leave that to Ludmilla because we want to discover these anomalies with Carolyn Shoemaker. Because she's good at discovering them. But researching can be done by someone else as well. So, we're going to send her over, like, here. Or into the other direction, I don't know. Oh, let's start it. Let's start it here. And then here. There we go. Preparing planet for resource extraction. Our colony ship has gently touched down at the mouth of a large river delta on one of the several continents that can be found in Alpha Centauri Prime. This temperate forested region will serve as an ideal first landing site. The ship has been permanently converted into the administrative headquarters of the new settlement and its reactor core is in the process of being removed so that it may serve as the colony's temporary power source. Hundreds of small tents and prefab shelters have sprung up around the former starship's massive hull as colonists begin to disembark in large numbers. The first human elite city on an alien world. A great day for Megacorps Incorporated. Ah. Alpha Centauri. Let's explore that for minerals. What can we build here? Hmm. I mean, we have food decreasing, so... We should be able to... Build some food. We still have a lot of housing here available, so we don't need the housing right now. We could go for an agriculture district to have more food incoming because we really want to go for food. And as Alpha Centauri is going to be a uh, mineral centric planet maybe we want to have food on mega earth is doom coming hey look we have enough energy credits due to our many space stations What will we discover with the alien mural? Ludmilla. Ludmilla is at it. Boom! We built something. Built something again. Nice. Let's build another thing here. Another mining station of energy. Okay, basically some solar panels in space, probably. Asgard. Oh, look at that. There's also ice asteroids here. Look! 
Lena Westergaard Howe has leveled up. Now level 2, a genius. A genius of labs. Leading the physics research. Christiane Nusslein Folhard, also level 2 in society research now. And Mildred Dresselhaus. Engineering research, also level 2 now. Mining station is being built. Everything is fine. The culture district is going to be expanded, and there, in any case, that human will Research be able complete. to find work. Science officer Ludmilla Chernik has managed to partially translate the alien mural discovered on Proxima Centauri 1. The text contains a staggering amount of data. And the mural evidently serves as some sort of low-tech library. It describes in broad terms the collected technological knowledge of an alien civilization that dominated this region of the galaxy some 80 million years ago. A lot of it is already known to us, but the data does contain several promising leads for technologies we had yet to consider. There's enough data here to keep our scientists busy for decades. We will need an orbital research facility to continue the translation efforts. Intriguing. Plus two. Uh, society, engineering and physics to Proxima Centauri. <sighs> That's going to be great. What next? Let's send Ludmilla to the atmospheric object. I mean, we should already bring that on cause, right? Got enough minerals for it. We'll do it. Boom! I found something. Hey, an anomaly. In the Asgard system. Ship sensors are picking up an unexplained pattern of interference. In the Asgard system. <gasps> Aliens? Let's research that. that that's routine. Very, sl very low research time. So we're going for that instantly. What is this going to be? It's just too curious. Storing a lot. kind of hard for them to move to the artisan jobs. We have civilian industries here now. Ah, the alloy foundries. Look, that's sorted. That's cool. It's sorted already. Sonified science. The Mega Grissom crew has succeeded in isolating a signal embedded within the unusual pattern of interference in the Asgard system. The signal is a song. Oh. Complex sonification of an advanced mathematical equation, to be precise, and one that science officer Carolyn Shoemaker cannot seem to get out of their head. Who or what may have composed this song remains unknown, though its complexity infers an incredible level of technological so sophistication regarding subspace harmonics. The signal's geodesics suggest a point of origin from outside of our galaxy. There's something lurking outside. We're definitely curious what that is. Wow. That's crazy. Construction complete. Nice. Now let's look for more. Our research is already great. It's going to be greater in a very short time. Ah, look! Yeah, they found a job. Now, in the agriculture districts. They also got some housing from that, which is very good. And 
there's another human elite growing for us. Going, going to go for a specialist job, maybe. We'll see. We have good food income now. Construction complete. Nice. Research stations ready. That's going to help a lot. Prospect analyzed. Nice. Asgard is going to be researched. Enough units to adopt a new tradition? Well, we want to explore space. To boldly go, a new age of exploration is upon Megacorps Incorporated. As we once mapped the surface of our homeworld, we must now brave new terrain, space. There's a galaxy full of wonder waiting to be exploited. Ah, discovered. Survey speed increased by 35%. And also disengage chance increased by 50%. Just great. We need to go and explore very quickly now. Find out more. It's a Procyon system. Nice. A lot of food coming, a lot of minerals, energy credits we don't really need. Alloys. Yeah, we need more alloys. For what? But for what? Now going... There's something we have to calculate, right? Um, as a megacorp, we want to sell things, but we are also tending to go tall, and tall means research as well, so we might go for research centers and consumer goods. Energy signature. We have an energy signature. Mega Clark has picked up a strange energy signature coming from somewhere deep inside the atmosphere of Alpha Centauri B3. It appears to originate from a structure of some kind, possibly the remains of an orbital station, but the atmospheric pressure makes it impossible to approach. Nevertheless, scans of the unique signature have yielded a large amount of valuable physics data. Fascinating. Fascinating, as Spock would say. So we're ready here to do something, anything, and we will we'll research. Hmm. That's unlikely to have an habit a habitable planet, and we want maybe a new habitable planet right now. So let's survey these systems first. Then come back that way if we can do that. Herantis dust clouds. Block outside sensors. That's always good if you have something valuable in there. And so let's find more planets. Kelsim would be quite attractive. But we cannot settle there. It's a dry climate. And it oh it has but it has an atmospheric aphrodisiac. That would be cool to sell traveling there, right? The holidays of your life. The honeymoon. The honeymoon planet. That can be the honeymoon planet. It's dry. It's probably... Um, the little water you have there, you Another have very good beaches. Hey, we have nanomechanics now. Advanced instrumentation allows for the study and practical application of physical systems at nanometric scales now. Let's see, can we can we go for new research? What would help us? Powered exoskeletons would be great right now. Covet patterns, not too bad. Carrier operations, we don't need that. We have no enemies. Let's go for powered exoskeletons right now. Army damage goes up and minerals from jobs go up as well. That will help our little humans produce a little bit more. In the mines they love so much. <laughs> Really good workers in there. Oh, an open building slot too. Do we need more minerals? 
probably not at the moment, strangely. A new generator district? Of course not. We have enough energy. A new mining district? Could be okay. We don't really need it. We could go for something fancy. Adding some housing, maybe. Let's have a look. How is the housing? The housing is, is good. It's available. There's a lot available right now. 10 more than we need. There would be clerk jobs and the resource silos. We don't need resource silos, really. More research labs. Turn consumer goods into research points. Hmm. A corporate culture site. Hmm. Could be good. Really, the luxury residences increasing housing and amenities. We don't need it right now, but we might we might in time let's see so we have 10 housing available the pop housing needs from 26 pops is 23. so we're going to come up to 30 with no problem so we don't need the luxury residences right now we also don't need like something like precinct houses we could go for research labs without any problem We could go for the corporate culture side. And we could also go for civilian industries. For more consumer goods, in other, in other words. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So look, for now, we maybe want to just fill jobs in do we want to build a station here not right now no absolutely not do be quite careful in in where to expand because it goes so quickly and it's not something That should be done lightly as a corporation, I feel. Oh, look, there's Barnard's Star. Hmm. That's interesting. What are we going to have here? Planetary exploitation forecast complete. Nice. Miller Chernik has also leveled up. She's now level 3 even. It increases her survey speed by another 30%. Wow. <gasps> serious. Are you serious? We can build a new colony ship already. We can... And how much would it cost to have an outpost here? One hundred alloys and one hundred and fifty influence. How much would it cost here? Seventy-five influence. Yeah. So it's going to cost a little bit of influence more if we build here without anything. But Barnard's Star is a system. We maybe don't want to have, maybe, maybe we want to avoid that system. I'm not sure. We could avoid it, maybe. Are we going to have a separated sector here, then? That's something we'll have to try out. So maybe we'll settle in Barnard Star and then on Sirius. Because Sirius is quite something. I think it's safer for the Star to build that outpost here. For now. And Mega Earth, or rather the Mega Sun Station, can go for another colony ship right now. 
with human elites. Look, there's a human coming. Wow, we really hit this tech out of the ballpark. Wow. An abandoned ship has been left to drift aimlessly above this moon of Procyon 2A. Can we see that ship? It's here, have you seen it? The massive sails protruding from its hull suggest that it relied on solar power to function. Oh. Will we go for that right now? Or will we survey more? Screw it, let's research right now. It's routine, it's it's quick. We've also completed the research of quantum theory, getting more physics research from researchers. Exploring the mediation of fundamental forces through subatomic particles. And now, Lena Westergaard how look at that, automated exploration protocols as an astronomer. Mm, that might be something she would go for. Or administrative AI. Organizing circuitry, rerouting academic fervor. I think that first though. Survey speed. Uh, we want to discover space first and foremost. Whoa, 98 months. And this, 79 months. Yeah, I mean, hmm. It's hard to tell, but I, I think a higher survey speed will serve us well at the start. So let's go for that. We have more humans coming. They're going to fill very important jobs. We Another have bleeding edge technology discovered. Civilian industries. We should go probably for research labs. How many researchers have we now? Population. Two researchers. Yeah, we still need two metallurgists, so we're not going for that right now. Still need to wait for the people to come and work there. Genome mapping. Pop growth speed plus 10% even more. Mapping the genome of an individual through the sequencing of their DNA opens up for tailored medical treatments and therapies, says Christiane Nusslein Folhard. We could go instantly for genetic health care to uh, give our workers something to rely on when so they get sick less. Gene clinics, giving us medical worker jobs too. Turning consumer goods into amenities and pop growth speed. Very helpful. But also biodiversity studies would be really good. And the Offworld Trading Company, the offices of a non-governmental organ dedicated to improving the conditions of interstellar trade. Would also be nice, but biodiversity studies is something we're going to go for first. It's also biology, something that Christian and Nusslein Folhard will approve. I'm a little tense, I have to say. We need to be quick at expansion. And let's hope, yeah, look at that. Really nice growth now. Solar Sailor. We've discovered an abandoned solar sail ship in orbit around Procyon 2A. The sublight vessel was built by an unknown culture and appears to be several thousand years old. One of the massive sails has a large tear where some kind of object passed through, most likely a meteoroid, which appears to have disabled the vessel. Although the technology of the ship is severely outdated, it's possessed some interesting engineering design choices. Interesting, albeit primitive, design. Caroline Shoemaker has also leveled up doing that. Nice. Look, we can also edit the station already. Give it something, a defense station or something. We'll see about that later. I have tons of resources right now. It's very interesting. 
construction in, in Barnard Star is going to go well, and then we can build the research station quickly. Boom! We built something. Barnard's Star, there we go. That research station and the mining station after that. There we go. So what we would also go for as a megacorp going tall and maybe orbitals or something like that. Planetary exploitation forecast complete. Nice. The Grissom here then. Let's continue through that system. Very interesting pulsar system in that. Carolyn Shoemaker. Will you find out more. We have alloys there. That is very tempting, I've got to say. Anomaly detected. Oh, Ludmilla. We have a routine one. Unusual reading suggests that there may be more to this desolate world. Series 5A. Then meets the eye. Research. That's. That could be very important. Boom. Maybe another planet. We built something. Yeah, we built a colony ship here. Let's continue here. And actually, leave B for now would be better. Because. Serious. Yeah, we're serious about. researching everything here survey that system there's only only that left and then can we research again send the congo serious exploitation forecast complete serious is fully there and now we can research that tomb world Frank and Steiner has leveled up. Nice. Edict erosion goes up and monthly unity as well. Okrimar is not bad. Procyon and Kelsim. Also worthwhile, probably. The Congo. Yeah, that's that's kind of Construction a lot of complete. Days until we arrive. Barnard Star. And that outpost now. How's the population doing here? Yeah, we still need, still need metallurgists. Come on, give us metallurgists. Well, that would be a metallurgist. Very unlikely. Primordial soup nestled in sheltered pockets around Sirius 5A surface is a rich sludge of simple organic compounds that our researchers believe could be a hotbed for abiogenesis, the spontaneous formation of organic life from lifeless matter. Also something that was replicated in the lab's here already, the spontaneous formation of organic life. Yes, Sirius 5A has an unusually thick atmosphere for a barren world, which could make it hospitable for simple life forms, although this presents a unique opportunity to study what could be the early stages of the origin of life, it would be best to set our expectations low, as it may still be millions of years before life evolves naturally on Sirius 5A, if at all. Fascinating, but worth studying. Oh, yeah, the Mega Clark. Yes, now. Survey here. And here. And here. And here. Lud Miller is going to be quick. Already set on course. Colonize. Yeah, 
let's enter this orbit already. A quick expansion. Help a lot. Nigiro. Barnard Star Alpha Centauri series. We're not going to rename that, but the other ones like Pobma, when, whenever we have a station there. Take it a little bit more serious. We built something. Nice. We built something. Let's colonize the planet. Sirius Prime. And now, we are here, I could go build the mining station already and then here that research station on the barren world. I like the sound of this. Unemployed pops. Another human is unemployed. We need basic jobs for these humans. Mm. There's a new human coming, so we'll need more basic jobs. What would we need most? We have enough food. What kinds of jobs are these? Clerks, farmers, miners, technicians. Could go for commercial zones, that would help. Managers. Entertainers, not really. Do we have here nothing? Enforcers. Hmm. Not really. Research labs. Nope. So nothing of these. Yeah, maybe soldiers. Resource silos could give us these kinds of jobs. But probably we'll go for something like miners or something. Because, yeah, energy credits. I mean, we'll need energy credits. But not right now. But we also don't need minerals. So it's kind of what did we do we need most? The long run will need energy credits. Let's see what we have there. Yeah, that's the new regions, the new features we have. There's room for more agriculture. The Saharan Irrigation Project, the Mesopotamian Urban Corridor has more mining districts. The Boswash Metropolitan Axis. The Boswash riots traumatized an entire generation and led to sweeping legal reforms. Never forget Pearl Liver River Agglomerate, Mauritian Security Zone, and the Great Albertan Crater. A lot of mining possible. Mining is something that we'll need sooner or later. Energy credits, if you look at our uh, surroundings, we have a lot of energy credits in space, like look at Kelsey. So we could have a mining district here coming. Resource scan complete. Nice. On the other hand, yeah, there's that mining district, but we will have mining on Alpha Centauri because they have extra ores.
It's hard. It's hard. We need these clerk jobs, right? Or technicians. Commercial zones. Producing trade value and amenities. And we could then adapt to producing consumer products with our trade value. Yeah, I think that's that's nice. Let's add some commercial zones. That will add the jobs and do as good. We can really change the policy here. Because we'd rather need consumer goods. 83, consume 65. Uh, the alloys. Go for consumer benefits or marketplace of ideas. Would bring the energy credits down. It would help a lot. Let's wait until we have that running though. We're still good with the expansion. happening on Sirius. Are you landing there soon? Boom! I found something! Nice. Yeah, we're colonizing that planet as well. I'm a little bit irritated because it's not here, but okay. Impressive structure, litter, Nigiro 2 surface, practically begging for some archaeological work. Well, have to beg. Let's go. I'm gonna find out. How is the edicts doing too? Map the stars is still active for three years. Whew. Can I adopt something new? Here we go. Databank uplinks, high capacity quantum bands dedicated to databank transfers make possible virtually completely synchronous research operations across vast distances. We want to know more about these worlds. Boom! I found something! Oh, another thing. Our sensors indicate odd irregularities in Brockmas energy emission pattern. Well, that's research. Routines we're always going to research. Our um, scientists have override on that. Complete. Nice, nice. India. It's ready. And now we could go Procyon, because that's very good. And then Kelsim. That is a potential expansion spot. Once we have robots or something, or can increase the habitability of our people, or our planets. And in Procyon, we'll have some alloys that are going to be very valuable, so we're going to build something there. I think. Is that good? It's good. Let's do it. Send them over. The sins of the start, right? Edic. Monolithic. Nijiro 2 is uninhabited and indeed uninhabitable, but not unvisited. Its surface is littered with tail with tall cenotaphs carved from some mineral not native to the planet. We can exploit maybe let's take them with us. Evidently placed there by some artistically inclined spacefaring race. The monolith's flowing lines deftly chart a history so fantastical it must surely be fictional. Could image them for the archives. That would be good for our researchers. They are beautiful. 
could send di digital reproductions of the monoliths widely available in our empire. We could make business with that. I think we're split because we have a high ethic of materialism and research, but we also are a mega corporation. So let's roll the dice. We have a d20 here and with 1 to 10, I'm going to image them and 11 to 20. They are beautiful. Let's roll. It's a seven. Let's image them for the archives. It's going to be very beautiful there. Very, very interesting. Our food is in good condition. Energy credits are going to increase a bit. I think we can change that once we have... I think we can already do that. So, consumer goods would be good. Let's have a look at the policies because we don't need that many energy credits right now. Marketplace of ideas would be very good at the start, of course. Consumer benefits would be too. But we don't need that many consumer goods at the moment. So let's go for a marketplace of ideas. Trade can be used not only to move goods around, but also to facilitate the spread of ideas. We should focus our trade efforts toward ensuring that the message of our government is heard on all planets where we do business. And there's more. Unity. Boom. Yeah, that goes down, but we'll have a little bit more unity. Star patterns. The latest sensory readings from Pragma showed the star pulsating. I like that picture. That's new, though. Regularly, but when the crew on Mega Grissom arrived on site, there was no evidence to support this data. But most of the crew are in agreement that the anomaly was caused by a sensory malfunction. Science officer Caroline Shoemaker discards this theory. Caroline Shoemaker claims to have discovered similar pulsating energy emission patterns elsewhere, and now fears that something strange is happening to the galaxy's stars. They have charted the cause to the nearest affected star. <sighs> We must get to the bottom of this. Log updated. She's in charge. We have a special project. Tibacor. That's Tibacor. Can we see that? Here, okay, yeah. Let's find out sooner or later. Let's take it step by step. Who knows? Who knows? Colony established. High five. Mm. Colony is there. The reassembled ship shelter. We have nothing here. <laughs> so that's going to be fun. Con population is one pop. Let's have a look at the population. The human elite. And there is a human growing here. Where's that guy working? Probably here in the reassembled ship shelter, right? There's a colonist job here. Yeah. He is there as a colonist. Resource production is not there. Hmm. Something we want to build there. We can't build anything here. We could maybe. Did that have. Look. Oh, look! Wow, here. Can have a lot of mining districts. That is what the raw material brings us. So that's going to be fine mining. Really fine mining. Mega Earth. It's now clock jobs very soon. Construction complete. Already people working there. 
as clerks. Look at this. Inherent trade value. Why didn't, oh, Brockma system. More, even more. Planetary body, Brockma 4A appears to be covered in some manner of grayish substance, possessing strange properties and varying metallic composition. Wow, a gray substance possessing stra strange properties. It could be gray, that could be the brain. It's too fascinating to pass up. We'll research it right now. I mean, it's routine. Routine. So that I think is our promising start to the galaxy. I somehow couldn't stop playing, so that's what Stellaris has. <laughs> it has kept this this effect of one more well not turn, one more minute, one more losing yourself in time there. So thank you for watching. We have a lot to do. We have a lot to learn. We'll see if it all makes sense in the future when alien races are going to come to us and buy our services, hopefully, and not going to invade there. Because we don't have many military fleets. I mean, we don't need them. We're a corporation. We want to sell. We want to sell. And we have fine workers with us. So thank you for watching and happy gaming to you. Have a great time until next time in Megacorps Incorporated. We will explore space together and make great profits once we meet the others that might be there or not. Performance, prosperity, power. We wish to you.